to the audience that is watching it and listening, we welcome you. We hope that this message will get inside of your spirit and germinate and grow as well as, as the body here. I pray that the Holy Spirit was broaden our, our, our finite thinking anymore to a, 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 a bigger level. That we can see things in the spirit and know that it's already been taken care of by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ at the cross. Amen, the amen. cross. The cross. The cross. Let us never forget, Father God, for one day, one minute, one second, the cross and the price that was paid on that cross. Let your Holy Spirit have his way, not only just through me, but in each and every heart here today. Let this word that you've given me, Lord, not go unheard, but when they leave, they get something. If it's one word, if it's two words, whatever it may be, you would, you would, you would nourish that seed that's planted, Lord, and open their hearts and minds to the things that you have in store for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, if you've been paying attention with the messages that's been coming out of this pulpit with Nikki and Paulie and, and Nikki, when she prayed about, that really touched me because I kind of deal with the same situation with kids, about revival. And then Paulie preached, taking away the veil off our eyes. <laughs> then Nikki preached about the fire of God. And when Pastor called and asked me, I was like, man, the Holy Spirit, I don't, yeah, I, I feel like I'm in the wizard. I, I wizard it. Wilderness, I don't hear anything. So I'm driving home from work last Monday or Tuesday. And the word preparation jumped into my spirit. God is prepping us for his return. Amen. He's prepping us to see things in the spirit before it even happens in the natural. So with that being said, as, as, as believers, what's going on in the world right now shouldn't shock us. In the last days, there'll be perilous times. We're knee deep, no, we're neck deep in them. We pass knee deep, we neck deep. So preparation, think about that, preparation. Farmers, they prepare when they get ready to do all their farming and, and, and growing things of that nature. But me being a retired football player, I always have to go back to my sport. Coaches, coaches don't prepare their players when they show up for training camp. Coaches don't prepare the day before a game. Coaches prepare every single day. So the, prepar the preparation that he's preparing for is to give it to the players that he's going to coach when, he got, when, he get, when they get to camp. But then it's up to the players to perform. We've been prepped. Amen. But are our hearts still open for preparation like we, we, we done learned everything that we need to know? That's the enemy sneaking in there. Oh, you don't really need to read your Bible today. You don't need to pray. You don't need to go to church this Sunday. You ain't going to miss nothing. Yeah, you will. Yeah, you will. Trust me, you will. You can tell the difference when, when you, I, I, me, when I, have, when I have to work on a Sunday and can't be here, I can tell the difference in my week. I can. It's, it's so precious to be in the house of the Lord where other believers, because you hear so much of junk and stuff at your workplace, you just need a, you, you just need a break with somebody speak the same language you speak. You know what I mean? 
Preparation. Let's go with the meaning of preparation, and then we'll get to the, to the word. Preparation. The action or process of making ready for use. Making something ready for use or service of getting ready for some occasion, for an occasion, he's coming back. A test or a duty, a state of being ready. So we're going to go over to Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. I'm going to read it out, the uh, Amplified. It says, the kingdom of heaven shall be lamps, be likened to the ten virgins who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, thoughtless, and without forethought, and five were wise, sensible, intelligent, and prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take an extra oil with them, but the wise took flask of oil along with them, also with their lamps. While the bridegroom lingered and was slow in coming, they all began nodding their heads and they fell asleep. But at midnight, there was a shout, and behold, the bridegroom go out to meet them. Then all those virgins got up and put their own lamps in order. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, there will not be enough for us and for you. Go instead to the dealers and buy for yourselves. But while they were going away to buy, mm, the bridegroom came and those who were prepared went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was shut. Later, the other virgins also came and said, Lord, Lord, open the door to us. And he replied, I solemnly declare to you, I do not know you. I am not acquainted with you. Watch therefore, Give strict attention to and be cautious and active, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Son of Man will return. We have to continue to prepare on a day-to-day -day basis. We have to, in this day and age and time with everything that, that's going on around us, we have to be. We cannot be like the five that didn't bring any oil and say, oh, I got, I'm good. Oh, well, I read my Bible yesterday. I don't have to read it for the next two days. I don't have to pray. I prayed this morning. I don't have to pray before I go to bed. That message Jamie preached changed my life, my night routine. What are you preparing for at night when you lay down for the next morning? That was so powerful. We got it. This is what I'm talking about as far as us. When we get ready to come here, and hear, hear a word and, and, and we can't sit there and it's like, oh, I heard this before. You may have, but you may hear it a different way this time. Amen. You may hear it a totally different way. Like That's like reading the Bible. You're like, oh, well, I done read through the Bible like 10 times. Do I really? Yeah, you do. Yeah, we do. Yes, I do. Because God is always, it goes back to the, the, the message I pre preached before being the, 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 the new wine skin. You got to be open. You got to be fresh. You gotta, you, you, God wants to give something fresh to you every single day. He want to give you something fresh every time you open up the word. He want to give you something fresh every time you witness to somebody. Amen. 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 Some of the words that prepare, preparation means, it says readiness, awareness, cautiousness, mindfulness, watchfulness, putting together, drawing up, composing, constructing, fashioning, getting ready, production, arrangement, assembling, 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 instructions, teaching, educating, coaching, disciplines, guiding and directions.
when Jesus met with John the Baptist and he baptized him, where did he go? To the wilderness. Where are we at right now? <laughs> For 40 days and 40 nights. He's showing us in his word how to prepare and has been preparing us for this time. For his coming again. For the trials and tribulation that you go through. For the heartaches. For the battles that you want to wonder why this happened to me. You don't think he thought about that? Why he was in the wilderness 40 days, 40 nights? Praying, praying, praying. Do we take prayer really serious like we should or supposed to? Not all the time. Because he could, he could have something for you and you'd be like, oh, well, let me go and do this for his come out. You missed it. Done it. You missed it. So we already, we always got, we got to have a spirit of uh, a heart for preparation to be prepared for anything and everything now in, in this day. We are, we, we, I say it all the time every time I get up here. We, ha we don't have time to waste time. We do not have time to waste time anymore. Tick, 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 tick. The clock is running really, really fast right now. So preparation, you have to, it's like, it's like an athlete. You, you got to have a willingness when the coach has done all this study and he's prepared a game plan for you. And give you the game plan and you don't follow and you go out and try and play the game without being prepped. I play with guys. I play with guys where you get you, you you do all this you do all this this studying. You're watching film. I probably watch more film than I did practice because we're preparing to see things that we haven't seen. <laughs> we're being prepared for things we hadn't even seen yet. You think it's ugly now? Who? You think it's ugly now? You think you think? Oh, I can't believe this happening! I can't believe I can't believe I seen this. I... This is only the beginning, church. This is only the beginning of what the enemy is going to try to do because he knows his time is up. He knows his time is up, so he don't have time to waste time. Amen? Amen. In 2 Timothy verses 4 and 2, you don't have to go there. Once we accept our new life in Jesus Christ, God, pre God begins to prepare us for holy living and ministering to witnessing to others. Whew. Have you been ever like witnessing somebody? And they saw how you were before you came to Christ and you witnessed to them and you don't see any change. Frustrating, ain't it? That used to be us. So don't get frustrated. It's our job to be prepared with the word, to be ready to speak of your hope. That's what the Bible says. Be ready to speak of your hope, what you have in God. Then when you do, let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Amen. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Don't get up angry. Don't get discouraged. You looking at, <laughs> you looking at, and everybody, most of everybody here done heard my testimony, but you looking at somebody that I,
So when I go home, I don't, I'm, I'm being as humble as I can about this, and I ain't really ain't letting nobody know. So I had to go home um, probably two, three weeks ago. I was inducted into the Sports Hall of Fame back home. <laughs> when I got home, a lot of the guys that I played against in high school and everything did all the congratulating and all that. Then the ceremony came around, and it was good because my best friend that we played together, we both got in Doug at the same time. And it was six of us. It was six of us out of 41 people got in. Listen to this now. Each and every one of us that got up there and spoke was a born again believer. <laughs> out of those six, each and every one of them, I say that, I say that because when I got done with my speech and all of us gave glory to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, all of us did, but I thank, I thank the Hall of Fame committee. I said, I appreciate the honor, but the Hall of Fame I want all of us to be in is Heaven's Hall of Fame. I, I, I know no other way but to glorify God in everything, in any situation. I, 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 without him, I'm nothing. Amen. I wouldn't be standing here if it wasn't for him. So why wouldn't I glorify him? On the stage that I had before I knew him, I, I did my thing. I did my thing. I, I, I did my thing. And that stage was supposed to have been for him then, but I didn't. I did. I glorified me instead. And I was so, I, I, I was in tears when I, when I was driving to the ceremony because God, I said, this is great. I appreciate this. I do. But it's all about you now. This is, that, that life is behind me. I'm here to glorify you and everything I do now. It was great. I, I, I enjoyed it. But I had to. It, I don't, this is only for a moment. This is going to be gone. When, I, when this is all the same, they ain't going to know who Tony Bullock is on the Hall of Fame wall. They see a name. Who is that? But for all of us to be in Heaven's Hall of Fame, Amen. Heaven's Hall of that's that's my that's my end game. That's why I want to go. That's why I want to be in nowhere else. Amen. 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 See, Woo. the parable that we just read is a strong, is strong of importance of readiness of being prepared at all times concerning the second coming. We're close. <laughs> We're close. We don't know the time, the day, nor the hour, but we are close. So when this word preparation came to my spirit, I'm like, Lord, this is not just for the, this is for me. This is, this is truly for me right now too, to a point where I don't, I don't talk about a lot of stuff. I keep a lot of stuff, but you wouldn't know it as far as the battles that I got to face on a day-to-day -day basis. You wouldn't know it when I come here and I sit in my corner over there. You wouldn't know it because I leave all that up. At the, when I hit that door, I leave all that outside. You ain't bring, you're not coming in here with that mess. I'm coming here to glorify my Lord. I prepare myself. I prep myself. It's like prepping food. You ain't just going to get some, some, some ribs and just throw them on the grill. They ain't going to put no seeding on them. Ain't nobody want to eat. <laughs> ain't nobody want to eat that. Next thing you know, everybody be going home and ain't nobody taking a plate. When I come here, I'm taking a plate home with me because the food is good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. 
Hoda Bahande Hesi Handaman. I got We got to get out of our comfort zone. Amen. We got to quit. We got to stop thinking everything is okay with people around us. People are hurting and dying every day. And the devil is tricking them thinking that they don't have to accept Jesus Christ. And we're around them every single day. God has prepped and positioned us in places, like I said before, pastor and the family can't go, but we can. What are we doing, church? I'm crying because I'm just at fault as you are. I'm just as at fault. The Bible says prepare the way for the Lord. Are we preparing people around us every single day that we know we can touch, that we know, we know they ain't living right. But God, I don't want to offend nobody. Yet Christianity is being offended on a day-to-day basis in every form or platform they can God help us. God help us. Family members. This ain't even important. This family members. That oh, I ain't going on. Yeah, oh, if there's such and such at the at the at the family cookout, I ain't going. You ain't going. That could be the one time that you witness to that family member and they accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Preparation. Preparation. We're holding grudges We the whole of grudge. <sighs> Who are we the whole of grudge the way we treated Jesus? <sighs> let it go. 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 That grudge you're holding on to, uh, that offense that you can't get over, let it go. Let it go, let it go, let it go. God wants to do so many new things for us. And we're holding him back. We're we're holding our Lord and Savior who wants to pour into us all that we need. And we're holding it back. We're holding it back. <laughs> Whoo! Let it go. So he can do a new thing and pour into us fresh and new anointing on a single every single day basis. 
That's what he want to do. He wants to give us something fresh and new every morning, every day, every second, every hour. But we're holding him back. Prepare yourself to receive something new from the Holy Spirit every day. Every single day. Every single day, prepare your heart before you leave your house, before you even get dressed or however you want to do it. But every single day, prepare your heart to receive something new from our Lord, Savior, our Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit every single day. We need this more and more than we can ever imagine. More than we can ever imagine. God wants to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or think. Prepare our hearts. Prepare our mind. How do you do that? How do you do that? How do you do that? First things first. First thing first. Seek ye first. Are you seeking? Do you seek when it's convenient? Do you seek after you did everything you wanted to do and then you seek God? Do you seek after you watch this movie and then you seek God? Well, after I come back from my kids' basketball base, sporting event, then I do it. First things first. First things first. Maybe something. When it was time for Jesus to go to the cross, and he said, Well, let me go do this first before I go on the cross. What if what if God that not that he would, but what if God, what if God treated us like we treat him? That was a walk off home run. Whoo! Whoo! What if God treated you and I like we treat him? Mindset would be different, wouldn't it? The way we walk and talk and act would be different, wouldn't it? So why we treat him the way we treat him? Whew, it's quiet. The Holy Spirit is digging into somebody that right now, digging deep. I know he's digging into me. And I'm here, I'm standing up here. I wonder, I see why I, I ain't have, when you actually preached last Sunday, I had to work. This was for this Sunday. What if God treated you like you treat him? How would you feel? Man, we already know, oh, well, why is God letting me go through this? Is why God letting this happen? What? We ask those questions. We do. But that's an unprepared heart when you start thinking like that. That's an unprepared heart when you start thinking, well, God let this happen or why God do this? No, no. 
This spiritual playbook has prepared us from the beginning and continue. Look at the prep that he had. He tried with Adam and Eve. Prepped them, put them in the garden, had everything they needed. Everything they needed. And they messed it up. We got everything we need and we're still messing it up. And we're still messing it up. And here's the, here, here's the good thing about it. Well, that one didn't work. So God said, well, I'm going I'm to I'm fix it. Let me go over here and let me give him my son. Everything God did was in preparation for us to meet Jesus. Everything. Everything that he did was prep. Everything was preparation from beginning to the end. It's up to us. It's up to us, just like a coach, prep his team, got the game plan ready, got the film. We got certain tendencies that they're going to do. They got certain plays they're going to run on certain down. But yet you don't look and study none of that. So I just go out here and just wing it. <laughs> it's not the time to be winging nothing right now. It's time to get real with yourself. For you that got kids, They're not lost. They're not helpless. There is hope. Let me say that again. There is hope. The thief on the cross didn't serve God, didn't believe God, didn't say the sinner's prayer. The day he's supposed to die. Lord, remember me. He goes to paradise. Your children, whether they're here or not, has a seed planted in them. That seed ain't dead. That seed ain't dead. It's still being watered. You're looking at a seed. I'm looking at seeds. I heard this saying yesterday. And this is for 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 parents that got kids that are backsliding or just straight or whatever. Samson's strength. Where did he get it from? He got it from God. But, but, I, the way they said it, he never prayed. He never read the Bible. But yet he had all his strength. But what he had was his mom's covenant. He had his mom covenant covering him. Amen. That was his strength. Amen. That was his strength. So your, your, your kids being out there and you thinking, oh, no, no, they're covered. You're looking at one. Grandma said you're going to preach. I know I said it before, but I got to get it out there. You're going to be the preacher of the family. Mm -mm, Grandma, I am having way too much playing, playing football. I'm traveling in the world. I got money in my pocket. And yeah, I'm good. <laughs> 36 years later, 
here I am. So the words, thank you, the words and the prayers that you're praying for your family members, whether it be your child or family members, don't stop. Keep speaking life to that. Keep speaking life to it every time you see that person. Life, life, life. No, okay, well, he, he, oh, he going out and clubbing and party night? He been drinking all day? No, that's the preacher of the family right there. Well, he just brought this, this uh, cold cooler full of beer. Da, da. That's the preacher of my family right there. 36 years. 36 years. Like I said, what if God treat us like we treat him? What if God treat us like we treat him? That story about Samson, it, 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 it hit me like a ton of bricks because that took me right back to my grandma. I'm like, I was, you, you wonder, you wonder how did I get out of all this stuff that I was bringing on myself? That's what's going to happen to your family members. It's going to be such an outpouring. When, when God said, behold, I am doing a new thing, he mean that. You know why he mean that? Because the simple fact is the old you're familiar with. The old you done got familiar with. You got comfortable. You got complacent. But I'm about to do a new thing. But you got to prepare your heart and mind and in your spirit to be able to receive that. That's what we got to get. We got to be prepared to receive the newness that God is trying to give us. We don't want to be that old wine skin that I talked about where it's all right. And but they did say, it though, if you pour oil, if you soak that old wine skin in the oil, it will be refreshed. We're being refreshed every single day. Let God have his way. Stop putting up walls and stop saying, oh, I'm good where I'm at. No, let him do that new thing because that new thing may be the new thing that get that loved one to come to Christ. That new thing may get that co-worker that's been trying to get to you on the, on the low low because they don't want nobody to see you talking about God to go ahead and just be bold for it. Amen? Hmm. Well, that wasn't on the script. <laughs> that, wasn't on, that wasn't on the script. Oh, boy. Thank you, Lord. When, when I was home visiting my family and with the induction, so me and, me and the wifey said, we getting away. Which Panama City Beach ain't but like 30 minutes from my, from my hometown. And so we go down and it was in the middle of the week and then it was like our school start earlier down there so it wasn't nobody it's like we had to beat to ourselves and I'm like hey but the surfers came and that was the first time I ever seen surfing in real life and just to see them out there in the water and they were waiting on waves it was waiting on waves waiting on waves and they they finally get that right wave and they'll go but they don't plan the waves. They prepare for the wave. They don't plan the wave. They prepare for the wave. So when the right one comes, they leave. And I was like, man, we got to prepare for the next move and the next wave of what God has for us. We got to be prepared, man. We got to have that heart germinated. We got it cultivated. We got it plowed up so we can put some seed in it. But I'm going to end with this one. This story that I read. 
this father is kind of it's kind of it, when I first read, it, I'm like, that was this. This is kind of cruel. But then when I read and got to the end, I was like, wow. So this father takes his son. It says time for you to be a man. So the father takes the son, he takes him out into the forest and they sit him on a log and they blindfold him. And he says, son, you can't take this blindfold off until the rays of the sun you see the next morning. You can't call for no help. You can't scream, you can't do anything. So the night comes Wind started blowing, trees and leaves and everything blowing all over the place. Kids just nerve a uh, 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 wreck. He can't call for help. He just got to sit there and wait for the sun to arise for the next morning. The next morning comes. The rays hits his blindfold. And he takes his blindfold off. He's getting some bearing and he looks to the left, to the left and to the right. And when he looks back, he sees his dad sitting right next to him. The moral of the story is God will never leave us. God is always there when we don't think he is, especially when we're going through a real bad trial and tribulation. God is right there with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us without any help or support. But we got to be in preparation to receive everything that he wants to give us. We really do. Because that's how much he loved us. Just like that father, that father knew the whole time that his kid was going to be in that forest blindfolded, that he was going to be right there. We just got to trust God. We got to trust God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God.